woman, girl, you. Join me weekly for Girl Talk, which we will do a devotion together, talk about the word, and how to apply to our lives daily. As we dive deeper together, grow intimately together, we will begin to know Jesus more so our lives shine the gospel in such a way that other people will want to taste and see that it is good. If we succeed, we give thanks. If we fail, we seek His grace. And then, when the day is done, we will place our head on the pillow and rest. Let's do it. Hi, welcome to another week of Girl Talk. It is so good to be back with you for another week just to share, jump into the podcast and just what all that is going on. This one would fit so perfectly to what's going on. So I, I um, hope it blesses you and um and speaks to your heart just where it is. So let me open in prayer, and then we're just going to dive right in. Father God, I thank you for a new week, Lord. I thank you that you've kept us this new week, Lord, and to see this day, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you are so good to us. I thank you that you know all things for us. I thank you that you have a plan for our lives, and it is to give a hope to us and for us to have a future in you, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you bless our time together, Lord. I just lift each one that is listening to this podcast, Lord. I lift them up to you. Lord, we're going through a a big curveball, Lord. And I just lift it up to you, Lord. I pray over marriages. I pray over finances. I pray mental states physical well-beings, Lord. I pray, Lord, that each one of my sisters have every single thing that they need during this time, Lord. Lord, we look to you. You are where our help comes from. I thank you that we can trust in you and lean not into our own understanding and that you will direct our path. Bless this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today we start off with no doubt the most abused scripture, I think, in the Bible, and that is Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plan that I have for you, declare the Lord, a plan for welfare and no evil, to give you a future and to give you a hope. NIV says that it is a plan to prosper you and not to harm you, a plan to give you hope and a future. Yes, I said it the most abused scripture out there. And um, we use it over everything Uh, from the football team to the baseball team. We declare a future of victory over adversities uh, to prayer of victory over sickness. This verse has covered so many things. So, so many things. Jeremiah 29, 11 is uh, truly an absolute uh, situational verse that we love to use and we will throw it out all the time. So that's why I'm (laughs) joining. That's why we're starting with that verse today. And, um, and it'll probably explain why we love it so much and why we declare it because it can declare the name, the nature and the heart of God. And ultimately It is the heart of Christ for the world's needs and not a bunch of his followers chasing endless things. But it is to know that when life comes at you, that God has an amazing plan for your life and that we can live a life with love and hope and joy because of God and the future and the hope that we have is what the world needs. So let's start it off right there today. It is what we need today even with the virus going on. You know, I have to say this. Life seems to have a way of throwing us a curveball. <clears throat> and sometimes, you know, it just, it comes. And it just that absolute moment, it takes our breath. Sometimes these curveballs are minor annoyances. Sometimes they're events that become funny with time. Or sometimes they're events that, There's nothing minor or humorous about it. It's just the way it comes in. And then there's there's those type 
Oh, curveballs that are death of a loved one, or a car crash, or being diagnosed with an illness, or just deep disappointment. Or, better yet, we can say this, there's this virus that shuts down the whole world. What a curveball. So, what I thought was, let me think, what is a curveball, actually? And how do I deal with a curveball? It is almost spring, and as we know, because it's springtime, people start getting on their mind, especially that baseball is the all-American pastime, and it just gets in the flow at springtime. So we can look at it like this, that right now, here it is, it's almost spring, and we got a huge curveball coming at us, and what is I want I really want to look at a curveball. I had um was watching um we were in a restaurant. I was in a restaurant with my son and uh, they were talking about baseball. So I was like, "You know, what is a curveball? What do you think?" And I said, "I think about you know, baseball and I'm not a huge baseball fan, but there are people who really truly love baseball. I have a couple of friends who are truly, truly into baseball, and they go to every game, you know, their season uh, ticket holders, they love it, they love the crowd, they love the peanuts, they love all of that, and, um, but that's not me, I've gone a couple of times, and it's a great time of, for me, catching up, so, I was like, you know, I really don't know what a curveball is, and I probably wouldn't know if one was thrown on the field, but I know when a curveball comes into my life, and, And so what a curveball is, or the definition, the dictionary definition comes to mind, something which is unexpected, something that's surprising or disruptive. But I wanted to understand it more about a curveball in baseball. What are they and when and why do the pitchers throw them? So my son began to explain the that answer to me. He told me that after you throw a, throw an inside fast pitch, then you use a curveball to throw the batter off or cause him to chase the ball. Since the curveball, if thrown correctly, is meant to trick or deceive the batter into thinking that the ball is coming their way, and it usually works. Hmm. So, This is a way to strike people out. Just like curveballs come into our lives, it's like it knocks us off our feet. Here is what professionals added to their uh, their description when I looked it up. A successful major league batter gets gets to hit only 30% of the time he comes up to bat. Not even 50%. Ooh. One of the ways that a pitcher lowers his chance even further is by throwing a curveball. A curveball is a pitch that appears to be moving straight towards the home plate, but usually it's actually moving down and to the right or to the left by several inches. Obviously, a pitcher has a curve, it's going in a little bit harder. And the person up for a bat is going to try to hit this fastball, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So for us, again, a curveball is unexpected, it's surprising, and it's disruptive. So I have to ask you, what kind of curveballs have you been faced with lately? Things that was unexpected, surprisingly, and disruptive in your life. Because this year, as you know, we're walking out, be fearless. And in being fearless, it's hard when things are unexpected, surprising, and disruptive. Because let's be real, it's better if we control things and we have things under control. But I'll go back to the scripture again, that is our main scripture. It is, for I know the plan that I have for your life, declares the Lord, a plan to prosper you and not harm you, a plan to give you hope and a future. I feel like right there, I had to just release control of the plan that I have for my life, and 
honestly, if I'm releasing it, there may be some surprises. There may be some um, unexpected things, and it might be a little disruptive. But let's talk about it for a minute. What kind of curveballs can we ex- experience as we walk in the journey of life and faith? I'm just going to hit you with some minor daily inconveniences. Maybe you've experienced these. But as a mom, your child gets sick and you have to change your plans. Or you get a speeding ticket as you're rushing to an appointment that you're already late for. Or your boss asks you to stay late on a project when you've already scheduled family time or something important is, is going to happen after work. Or the weather upsets the daily activity. You could have planned to go out with the family on a hike or a walk and everybody's excited and you've planned this for a long time, but here you are, you can't even go. So those are, I'm going to say, minor daily inconveniences. All right, here's some that will knock us off balance. Someone hits our car and causes major damage. And guess what? They don't have insurance. The refrigerator stops working and there's no money in the budget to replace it. And the warranty ended last month. Your child gets hurt playing a sport and now requires surgery. Mm. And then a good friend shares something about you behind your back and now it has came full circle back to you and it's different than what you told them. Those are some things that really can knock us off our feet and could easily make fear creep in. Let's do this one. Let's do this. What if there are some curveballs that threaten to strike us out and take us completely out of the game. One is this lovely virus that we have in March 2020. We will always remember this day because it has definitely struck us out and has taken some of us out of the game. And I am sure that you have found this very surprising, unexpected, and is very disruptive to your life. And let's be real. I know I just had a little laugh in there, but fear like straight up has creeped into our world and it's real. Fear is is real and it's happening and you see it right before us that people are fearful of what's going on. So let me tell you some more things that might threaten to strike us out. A loved one is diagnosed with cancer or some terminal illness. Or you may lose your job and you have a hefty mortgage of payment. Or the spouse you find out is unfaithful. Or someone close to you dies. Those are some things that can threaten to strike you out and take you completely out of the game. Completely out of the game. May even knock the wind out of you, right? When our world gets rocked, it can be hard to hope for a future. When all these things, whether it was minor, whether they just knocked us out for a little bit, or they knocked us completely out, it is hard for us to hope for a future. It is very easy for us to get angry, resentful, or even bitter, anxious about what happens next. And yes, fear creeps in. How can I ask us to be fearful when fear just creeps right in? And in Proverbs 31, it describes a worthy woman in verse 25 as being as being able to laugh or smile at the future as she is clothed with strength and dignity. And we can put on the clothes of, of strength and smile at the future. How can we? Here's this woman in Proverbs 31, and she gives us an example that she is clothed with strength and dignity. But really, how can we put on clothes of strength and a smile of the future when something is truly is a daily minor inconvenience 
R and knocked us off balance. R it striked us out and took us completely out of the game. How? How? First, we can start by remembering how good God is and that he is a good, good father. You know, I think when we get up to bat, whatever those situations are, here we are. We have our helmet on. We're ready for the fight. We're ready for to get in that game and play. And we're up to bat and we're standing there. We're just standing right there. And we're just like, how are we going to get through this place? And we're thinking, this just like took me out of the game. This just struck me out. And I feel like there is no coming back. No coming back whatsoever. And then as I take a deep breath and I think I lost my job, our friend was diagnosed with an illness how am I going to knock this ball out of the bat? And this is what came to mind as I, as I get there. As I put my bat up, think about us. We're getting ready to play. Bases are loaded. You're standing there. And man, you start thinking, truly, bases are loaded. My child is sick and I had to change my plan. A good friend shares something about me behind my back. And someone close to me just died. The bases are fully loaded. I have the bat up to swing. I'm ready to knock it all out of the park. How am I going to get through this is the first thing that I think about. How am I going to be fearless and, and bring all this home without running, hiding under a rock, being sucked into a pit? How am I? And then as I put that bat up, and mind you, I'm going to hit where the bat, I'm, I'm mainly um, uh, right-handed, so I'm going to make that right swing into that ball. And I am going to knock that ball out of the park. I'm going to knock it out of the park. You know why? You know why? Because I'm clothed with strength and I'm putting on a smile for the future. A smile because I know God is with me. And right then in that moment. Right then, in that moment, instead of hitting the ball, this is what I do. This song comes to mind. I stop and I start singing it. Because I know that he's a good, good father. Tender whispers of love, dead of night and can tell me that you'll be soon that I'm never alone. The good, good father is who you are, is who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. All righty. So now I hit that ball, and the whole stadium stands up, and we sing, he's a good, good father. He's a good, good father because he's clothed me through his strength, and I can put a smile on my face for the future. Now, I know that God is good. I know that God is good. I know that he's with me. I know in Psalms 106, it reminds us to praise God for his goodness, for we are never, ever, ever alone. He alone is good. And then I know that God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and everywhere. While we may not understand the current situation or the past trial, but the Lord sees it all. That's why the whole stadium is standing up. And these are my brothers and sisters in Christ, and I'm singing this song, and they're singing along with me because they know that he's a good, good father, and he knows how to work any situation for our good. And when I step to the bat, and I swing because I'm clothed with his strength and I put a smile on my face, I can be fearless and knock a home run and bring it all home.
home because I know that God loves us. I know that God is love and he loves us so much that he wants to express this to us. And he's expressed it throughout scripture over and over and over and over so many times. God has expressed his love in so many ways. And his love for us is shown the one amazing way that we can never forget is that he sent his only son to die on the cross so that we may have life and life abundantly and life that we walk in being fearless. God is our father and he is a good, good father. He loves us. He wants to protect us. And his tender love is so ever patient with us. So here we are. We're at that bat. We just hit a home run. And I think about it. What if we know that God is with us? So that would change the whole thing that we understand that we won't always know if a curveball is going to come because then we'd be prepared in advance and we wouldn't need God. And unfortunately, just like baseball, the game is like, it doesn't work that way. The solution is not to avoid the curveball. They will be thrown anyway. But Jesus reminds us in John 16, 33, in this world, you will have troubles. You cannot waste your precious time and energy trying to avoid the curveball. Instead, you're going to step up to the bat, look that picture straight in the eye. We need to focus on how we will respond when we get to the plate. And a curveball takes us by surprise, but we know that God is right there. Here's this quote by John Swindoll, excuse me, Charles Swindoll, changed his name. And it's so applicable when we're dealing with situations that threaten to take us out of the game. Know this, life is 10% of what will happen, but 90% of how we react. So I say to you, when you step to the plate and you know that this is a minor daily inconvenience, or it may knock you off base and balance, or it may threaten to knock you out of the game. How will you respond? Will you just think of that worship song and and remind yourself that he's a good, good father? Because again, life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. So personally, I've had some major curveballs thrown at me almost in every area of my life. And I even think of lately, probably in the last five months, Um, the different ones in my health, in ministry, in my family, in friendships, they have not only surprised me, but they shook me. But they have also threatened to sideline me completely. Have you been there? Are you there today? Even with this virus, where are you? Are you still in the dugout? Are you up to bat and you're ready? Are you ready? These curveballs that I've had have made me walk away and sometimes even want to give up the game and get out of the game altogether. But like the batter came, like a batter, it can be humiliating to be at the bat and then you get this ball coming. We feel the same way. But a batter is exposed. He's all exposed when he steps up to the plate. All eyes are on him as the ball leaves the pitcher's hand and it launches right to him. The pressure can be overwhelming. Can you imagine? All eyes are on you to walk this out of being fearless. We stepped up to the plate. We're a child of God, and we know that God is with us, and he clothes us just like this batter. All eyes are on us, and the pressure is so overwhelming. And when life throws you that curveball that's unexpected, the the experience is full of the same emotions and exposure. Everyone seems to be watching and waiting. They're asking, how is she going to handle it? Will she take a swing? Or is she going to strike out? Can she stay in this game? Is she faking it until she make it? Or is she faithing it until she makes it? I don't know about you, but I don't want to be that player struck out of the dugout because of fear to strike out. 
God called us to fight fear with faith. And we're reminded in John 16, 33, God encourages us, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So how do we deal with those curveballs? God can even use the, the, this game to teach us some profound truth. There is always a way to handle life's curveballs with his help, with his help. There's always a way always a way to handle those curveballs that may come after you, that may try to knock you out of the game, that you may not even be aware that they're coming. But God is with us every single step of the way. He will get us through it. He will truly get us through every one of them because he is a good, good father and he wants to be there for us. And he's been there for us. So when the curveball comes, you remember this. When you fall, he will lift you up. When you fail, he will forgive you. When you're weak, he will be strong. When you feel like you're lost, he will be your way. When you are afraid, he will be your courage. When you stumble, he will steady you. When you hurt, he is going to heal you. When you are broken, he will mend you. When you are blind, he will lead you. When you're hungry, he will feed you. When you face trials, He will be with you. When you face persecution, he will shield you. When you face problems, he will comfort you. When you face loss, he will provide for you. And when you face death, he will carry all of us home to meet him. So know that God is with you and you are his and we belong to him. So it matters. God is our father. His love is for us and his love is to protect us. There's also the saying, and it comes from a Chris Tomlin's song that I played, A Good, Good Father. Know this, you are never alone. We have a good, good father. It is who you are. It is who he is. It is who he is to us. And we are loved by him every single day of our lives. He loves you and I so, so much. So I just want to encourage you. Life may throw you a curveball. Life may seem to take you out, but know that God is with you every single step of the way. Every single step of the way. Remember, life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you're going to respond. Know that others are watching you. So I want to take CURVE really quick and I want to explain the acronym that go with CURVE. CURVE, C. Call out to Jesus. U. Use the Bible to gain wisdom and understanding. R. Reach out to others for encouragement and support. V. View the curveball as an opportunity to grow stronger, wiser, and healthier. And E. Expect to be continuously thrown curveballs throughout your life. Know this, that God can even use... This ball game to show us so much and so much truth that even when we call on him, he knows what life is going to throw us before it happens. Remember the scripture, for God has a plan for our lives and he wants to be there to help us. He says this in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11, therefore encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact is that I'm doing. Remember, we have to encourage each other, reach out to each other. That is what we were created for. And when we have a curveball, we think of this. Consider it all joy, my sister, whenever you face trial of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Perseverance is going to produce that we can say, be fearless. Do not allow them to make you anxious or lose hope. Bring everything to God and ask him to help you to be fearless. So when a curveball has caught you by surprise, we step up to the bat and know that God is with us and he has a perfect plan. So take heart, lean on Jesus by your faith, be determined to stay in the game. God will never, ever leave your side. He is right there with you to carry you every single step of the way. So we're going to be fearless this next week. He is, he will 
see you through. So hold on to him and be fearless. God is with you, even during this time that we have this virus going on. I just want to encourage you that God loves you and he is a good, good father. So let me pray for you. I thank you for joining me this week. I pray this encourage you. When life throws a curveball, know it's about how we react. And we're going to react because we can be strong in Christ and we can be fearless. We can be fearless. We are warriors. We are not victims. We are clothed with strength and a smile about the future because God has us. So let me pray. Father God, I thank you. I thank you that you will never leave us alone. I thank you that you are a good, good father. I thank you, Lord, that you have a plan for our lives. So Lord, we just surrender those plans to you because we know that it's a plan full of hope and to make our future good, Lord. I thank you that you love each one of us, and I thank you of how you express your love in so many ways, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you that you are with us and you will see us through anything. Every curveball that comes our way, you are right there with us, Lord. We will take heart, we will lean unto you, and we are determined to stay in the game and be fearless because we know that you will never leave our side. So I thank you for your word is active and alive. I thank you for whomever is listening. Again, I pray it encourages them to walk by faith and to trust you with the plan and to be fearless. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, and I'll see you next Monday right here with another podcast of Be Fearless. Join me on Facebook Live Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. for morning devotion, uh, Pacific Standard Time. Also, I share a word of wisdom on um, Wednesday in um, Instagram for 15 minutes a day in the word. Also, I have a Facebook group of lots of women. Come join me there where I also post daily. I have another group called the Girl Squad, and we do a topical book that takes us to some scriptures in the Bible And um, we just enjoy encouraging each other and lifting each other up through a book. Um, You may reach out to me. You can message me or email me. But thank you for your support. Thank you for uh, being there. Thank you for listening. And also, please share to someone who may need to hear it. Have an awesome week, and I'll catch you next week. But remember, be fearless. Be blessed. Bye-bye. Girls, get it. See you next time on Girl Talk. Be fearless.